It's only been four months since my last 4K lifestyle projector showdown, but since then three new projectors have been released that are absolutely redefining the modern projector space. In this video, I've got the new Xgmi Horizon Ultra, Hisense C1, and Nomadic P1000, and I'll be comparing them to the JMGO N1 Ultra, which was the top performer in my last video based on specs alone, and the Formovi X5, which was my pick for the best all-around 4K lifestyle projector. In this video, we'll look at their brightness, contrast, color accuracy, viewing experience, input lag, fan noise, audio quality, and throw characteristics to figure out if any of these three new projectors can take the top spot away from the 4Movi X5. First for a price of just $1,299 is the 4K Nomadic P1000. Nomadic is a new company based in Taiwan, and instead of copying existing lifestyle projectors, Nomadic decided to remake the mold with the P1000, which is a short throw RGB LED projector with a 1.2 times optical zoom and a 0.65 inch DLP chip that is usually found in much higher priced projectors. Nomadic claims that the P1000 is 2300 ANSI lumens, but in my testing it measured well short of that at just 1510 ANSI lumens on its brightest picture mode. On its most color accurate preset, which was movie in normal light source mode, the Nomadic peak brightness was only 81.8 nits, which is equivalent to around 750 ANSI lumens. However, the P1000's big strength wasn't brightness, but contrast. On normal brightness mode, I measured the black floor at 0.052 nits for an impressive contrast ratio of 1,575 to 1. And setting the light source to dynamic black 1 yielded a slightly higher peak brightness of 82.9 nits and a black floor of 0.027 nits for a dynamic contrast ratio of 3,061 to 1, which is absolutely unmatched at this price point. After that, for $1,499 is my pick for the best all-around 4K projector from my last video, the Formovi X5. The Formovi is a single laser projector which claims to have 2450 CVIA lumens, and in my testing I measured 2273 ANSI lumens on its brightest picture mode, and 166.6 nits, or around 1500 ANSI lumens in its most color accurate mode, which is cinema. As a result of that much higher overall brightness, the Formovi's black floor was significantly higher than the P1000's at 0.185 nits, giving it a sequential contrast ratio of just 902 to 1. After that, for $1699 is the brand new 4K Xgmi Horizon Ultra. Like Nomadic, Xgmi absolutely went back to the drawing board with the Horizon Ultra, not only including motorized optical zoom and an automatic motorized lens cover, but the Horizon Ultra uses a new hybrid light source, which combines the brightness and vibrance of a single laser light source with the wider color gamut of a four LED light source. XGMI claims that this combined light engine can give 2300 ISO lumens, and in my testing I was able to get close to that with 2162 ANSI lumens, but that was in performance mode with turbo light on, which no one in their right mind would ever use since it is heavily green shifted and it sounds like a jet engine. On the much more reasonable bright setting and the iris set to 10, the brightness dropped to just 1560 ANSI lumens, and I measured a full on, full off contrast ratio of 240 to 1. And in the mode where most people are going to watch the Horizon Ultra, which is the cinema mode with the iris set to 8, I measured a peak brightness of just 107.2 nits, which is around 965 ANSI lumens, with a black floor of 0.247 nits, for a less than impressive contrast ratio of 434 to 1. If you're willing to sacrifice a little bit more brightness, I found that iris level 4 was best for my viewing space with a peak brightness of 81.3 nits and a black floor of 0.115 nits for a sequential contrast ratio of 704 to 1, which is a lot better but still 200 less than the 4Movi X5 and less than half of the native contrast of the Nomadic P1000. Next for $1,999 is the 4K Hisense C1. This is the global version of the C1, which is confusingly called the C1S in China. But although the hardware specs of the Global C1 are the same as the Chinese C1S, the software is completely different, and the Global C1 supports both Dolby Vision and HDR10+, and it has an OS with a fully featured, full resolution, fully supported version of Netflix, which is an absolute rarity for smart projectors. The Hisense C1 has a triple laser light source, which Hisense says will put out a true 1600 ANSI lumens. And I'm not sure what true ANSI lumens are, but my C1 measured 450 lumens higher than that at 2058 ANSI lumens on its brightest setting and 109.2 nits or around 1000 ANSI lumens on its most accurate picture mode, Day Cinema, where it had a black floor of 0.096 nits for a sequential contrast ratio of 1133 to 1, putting it behind the 4Movi in second place for brightness and behind the Nomadic in second place for contrast. 
But then last for $2,029 is the overall top performer for my last video, the JMGO N1 Ultra. And if you're wondering why the top performer wasn't my top pick, it's because the JMGO N1 Ultra's triple laser light source produces a phenomenon that's called laser speckle that I find to be extremely distractive while I'm watching content. However, not only is this a completely different N1 Ultra than in the first video, but it also has just received the latest firmware update from JMGO that not only tweaked color profiles, but also seems to have reduced the maximum laser power to try to reduce that laser speckle. JMGO claims that their MALC triple laser light source will produce 2200 CVIA lumens on its brightest setting, which is called glaring. I measured this N1 Ultra at 2,304 ANSI lumens, which is 104 lumens higher than their claim, but interestingly 350 lumens less than my first N1 Ultra and 300 less than the last time that I measured this unit. Even with the reduced overall brightness, when I switched to the most color accurate mode standard, the JamGo had the second highest brightness at 156.9 nits, or around 1,420 ANSI lumens, with a black floor of 0.109 nits, for a sequential contrast ratio of 1436 to 1, taking the second place position from the Hisense C1 for both contrast and brightness. Along with brightness and contrast, color is equally important for producing a high quality projected image. And color has two important attributes. First is how many colors can be produced by that light source, which we call the color gamut. And the second is how accurately a projector can produce a requested color, which we call the delta error or DE. Looking at color gamut first, this diagram represents all the colors that our eyes can see, but video content is produced in a much smaller subsection of available colors. Standard dynamic range content is mastered in the Rec 709 color space, which is this triangle, while high dynamic range content is mastered in the DCI-P3 color space, which is this significantly larger triangle. And the newest HDR content can utilize an even larger color space called Rec 2020, though most movie content is still mastered in DCI-P3. Using a professional colorimeter, I can pinpoint a projector's three primary colors, red, green, and blue, on the color spectrum, and then draw a triangle between them. That triangle then shows all the colors that that specific projector can produce. If the triangle includes an entire smaller color space, we say that it covers 100% or more of that specific color gamut. For SDR content in the Rec. 709 color space, the Hisense, JMGO, and Xgmi all covered 99% or better, which would make them completely indistinguishable from each other, while the Nomadic covered slightly less at 96%, and the 4Movie covered even less than that at 93%. But even a trained eye would have trouble spotting the difference between 93% and 99%. However, when displaying high dynamic range content, the Hisense, JMGO, and Xgmi projectors covered 97% or more of the DCI-P3 color space, compared to the 80% on the Nomadic and 77% on the 4Movie. And expanding that into the Rec. 2020 color space, the triple laser light sources of the JMGO and Hisense were able to achieve 93% coverage or better, while the Xgmi was limited to 71%, the Nomadic had 64%, and the 4Movie had just 58%. When looking at color accuracy, I used my Portrait C6 HDR color and Calman Ultimate 2023's SDR color checker to measure each projector's out-of-the-box delta error, and I found that the Xtreme Horizon Ultra had very accurate colors with a delta E of just 3.89, the Nomadic was slightly worse than that at 4.7, then the JMGO at 4.81, the Hisense at 8.3, and last, the 4Movie had the least accurate colors with a delta error of 9.12. Which basically just means that if you want to experience content as the director intended, the Xgmi and Nomadic would be the best, and the Hisense and 4Movie would be the worst. But instead of me just telling you about it, let's see how it actually affects viewing experience. For this test, I set up two identical white 1.1 gain screens in my completely light controlled garage, and I used the same manual camera settings to record two projectors at the same time. Each projector is connected to its own Fire TV Max streaming stick with identical settings. Starting with the two least expensive projectors, the left is the 4Movie X5 and the right is the Nomadic P1000. For bright SDR content, there is no question that the increased brightness and laser light source of the 4Movie X5 gives an advantage and despite the higher contrast ratio of the Nomadic, some shadow detail is lost, particularly noticeable here in Danny's hair. Moving on to HDR10 from the Disney Plus app, in high contrast scenes where we would expect the Nomadic to excel in dynamic black mode and set to medium EOTF, shadows were over brightened, which did show more shadow detail, but also significantly reduced the color pop and scenes looked pretty flat and uninteresting. While the 4 movie did a very convincing job recreating the shine on the Dora Milaje Golden Armor. In the Netflix app, HDR content with predominantly bright scenes looked much better on the 4Movie X5, and the extra brightness of the 4Movie helped the blacks appear darker and made the colors pop significantly more. But in predominantly dark scenes, the higher black floor of the 4Movie was obvious, and blacks were muddy and gray compared to the Nomadic. 
Overall, I personally preferred the four movie, so I'm gonna send it on to the next round, but don't count the nomadic out yet because it's got some interesting tricks up its sleeve. Round two puts the four movie X5 on the left against the X Jimmy Horizon Ultra on the right. And on paper, this should be no contest since the Horizon Ultra has two thirds the max brightness of the X5 and less than half of the contrast, but tone mapping in Dolby Vision make a huge difference. Starting with bright SDR content, the Horizon Ultra was noticeably more saturated and color accurate and appears to have similar brightness to the 4 movie. And comparatively, you can see how green Danny's skin looks on the 4 movie compared to the Horizon Ultra thanks to that low 3.89 Delta error. Dolby Vision content from the Disney Plus app looked excellent on the Horizon Ultra, if not a little oversaturated, and better tone mapping went a long way in making up for the poor contrast of the Horizon Ultra, and it actually made the black levels look better than the 4 movie X5 in certain parts of the scene. But the biggest difference came from the Dolby Vision implementation in the Netflix app, showing Our Planet Season 2, where the x Jimmy's intra-scene contrast blew the 4 movie X5 out of the water, and the predominantly bright scenes that favored the 4 movie in Round 1 now easily went to the x Jimmy Horizon and Ultra. Unfortunately, as powerful as Dolby Vision is, it can't lower the black floor and the predominantly dark scenes looked pretty awful and easily favored the 4 movie, which still wasn't great, but it looked much better than the x Jimmy. Still, despite extremely poor performance in dark scenes, I was impressed by the color accuracy and tone mapping of the x Jimmy Horizon Ultra, so I moved it on to round 3 to face the other Dolby Vision certified projector, the Hisense C1. In bright SDR content, I still preferred the out-of-the-box color accuracy of the Horizon Ultra, but both projectors did a great job of displaying detail in both highlights and shadows, though the higher contrast of the C1 is definitely noticeable if you're looking for it, like in the chair and the keyboard and in Danny's hair, and dark SDR content massively favored the high sense, and the blacks on the Horizon Ultra were pretty gray blue and pretty distracting. Dolby Vision on the Disney Plus app absolutely blew me away on the high sense C1, and in this light controlled room it was close to, if not the best rendering of this scene from Wakanda Forever that I have seen from any projector, including the the AWA LTV3500, the Epson LS11000, and the BenQ HT 4550i, which are all significantly more expensive than the Hisense, which looked so freaking good. The predominantly bright scenes in Our Planet also favored the Hisense, which despite its slightly less accurate colors, showed much more detail, had better contrast, and also appeared to be sharper than the Horizon Ultra. And the dark scenes? Well, they went exactly how you would expect. The Hisense had a black floor of 0.096 nits compared to 0.247 on the x Jimmy, and in person I would have guessed that the black levels on the Hisense were at least three times darker than the x Jimmy, leading to an excellent viewing experience and easily moving the Hisense C1 onto the final round against the JMGO N1 Ultra. Without the advantage to Dolby Vision, I expected the JMGO to outperform the Hisense for SDR content, but oddly enough that wasn't the case, and I thought that the JMGO was too bright and almost washed out in the bright scenes, and too too dim and flat in the dark scenes. Interestingly, the JMGO held its own displaying Wakanda Forever despite not having Dolby Vision, but I still preferred the dramatic high contrast of the high sense, which still looked absolutely incredible and I don't think I can imagine a better rendering of this scene. Our Planet 2 on Netflix was a similar story with Dolby Vision tone mapping revealing so much more detail on the high sense than the JMGO in bright scenes while maintaining very good black levels in contrast in dark scenes. And even though the JMGO had a significantly higher sequential contrast ratio, the scene by scene tone mapping from Dolby Vision on the Hisense made its contrast and black floor look significantly better than the JM Go. So for pure viewing experience, the Hisense C1 outperforms projectors that cost twice as much. So now it's time to see if we can find any weaknesses. Starting with clarity and focus uniformity. I set up each projector perfectly aligned with the projector screen without keystoning, and I projected an image with different font sizes all the way down to 16 point font, and I took pictures of each corner to look for focus issues, sharpening artifacts, and chromatic aberration. From a purely focus uniformity standpoint, the Hisense C1 was the best with both the black and white text, with the JMGO in second, the 4 movie in third, Nomadic in fourth, and the x Jimmy was just slightly soft on focus in each of the corners, putting it in fifth place. From a sharpness standpoint, the Hisense was significantly over sharpened, so much so that you can see that the thinnest parts of the letters are missing. The JMGO and 4 movie were also a little bit over sharpened with the black text on the white background, but not on the white text with the black background. And the Nomadic and the x Jimmy projectors did a great job avoiding over sharpening and the text was true to the video source. When it comes to chromatic aberration, the JMGO was by far the worst with huge red shadows behind all of the text. The x Jimmy had a little bit of green sneaking into the white lettering, the 4 movie had a small amount of both red and green on opposite sides of the text, and the high sense and Nomadic had the smallest amount of chromatic aberration, only visible on the camera when zoomed all the way in. 
So all things considered, aside from whatever is reducing the edge size on the text of the Hisense C1, it had the best optical clarity and doesn't suffer from the same chromatic aberration issues as the JMGO N1 Ultra's triple laser light source. Speaking of triple lasers, my biggest issue with the JMGO N1 Ultra and the reason why it wasn't my top recommendation in the last video was laser speckle, which looks sort of like when you get pizza grease on a phone screen and then move your head around a little bit. The Hisense C1 also has a triple laser light source, and it also had laser speckle, but for me it wasn't nearly as pronounced as the Jamgo N1 Ultra. And I think the root of the problem is that Jamgo tried to mask the issue by vibrating those lasers back and forth, but all that does is it turns the laser speckled dots into laser speckled lines, which to me are much more noticeable. Still, I wouldn't recommend using the Jamgo N1 Ultra or the Hisense C1 on any highly reflective projection surface, and they look best when projected on the matte white screens with gains between 0.9 and 1.1. Despite their different light sources, all these projectors are DLP projectors, and all of them are using pixel shifting to get to 4K resolution. The JMGO, Hisense, 4Movie, and XGMI are all using the same 0.47 inch chip that does four pixel shifts to get to 4K, while the Nomadic is using a slightly larger 0.65 inch DLP chip that only needs two pixel shifts to produce 4K resolution. One of the big advantages of using the 0.65 inch chip is that you can get higher refresh rates and lower input lag times using less pixel shifting. I used the industry standard Leo Bodner lag tester to measure the actual input lag of each projector, and I found that almost none of them were able to achieve their advertised input lag values, except for the Nomadic P1000, which had an impressive 16.8 milliseconds of input lag at 4K 60 hertz and just 8.7 milliseconds at 1080p 120 hertz. And that puts the Nomadic P1000 in an elite category for gaming with much larger and more expensive projectors like the BenQ X3000i, and it makes it a great choice for anyone looking to play fast-paced competitive video games on the projector. The Jamgo and XGMI were also not bad at 35.1 milliseconds at 4K 60 hertz, but I don't understand why they're advertising 15 milliseconds of input lag at 4K 60, because I'm pretty sure that the 0.47 inch DLP chip can't even do that. Unfortunately, the Hisense and 4Movie were both around 50 milliseconds of input lag that pushes the limit for what's acceptable for anything except for casual gaming and definitely wouldn't work well for first person shooters. However, while that 0.65 inch DLP chip has a lot of advantages like better contrast, support for 24p frame rates, and lower input lag, in my experience the pixel shifting motors used with that chip tend to be pretty loud and this one is no exception. I measured the overall ambient noise from each projector from 12 inches directly behind and I found that the pneumatic was by far the loudest at 43 decibels. Then it was the 4Movie at 38 decibels. The Hisense was around 37 decibels. The Jamgo was around 35 decibels, which is pretty close to the noise floor of my room. And the XGMI was also around 35 decibels, which again is basically silent compared to the ambient noise in my room. I used that same setup to measure the overall volume of the internal speakers, and I used a spectrum analyzer to rate their overall sound quality at 50% volume. Here they are from worst to best sound quality.
I was also impressed by the spatial effects of the Hisense C1, and in my garage it did a great job filling the whole space and creating a soundstage that didn't seem like it was emanating from any single location. And last, to wrap up this very long video, let's look at mounting options and throw ratio. If you want to ceiling mount your projector, the 4Movie and Hisense are the only projectors in this group that have traditional four-point mounting threads hidden underneath their adjustable leveling feet. No good options exist yet, but hopefully we'll see more ceiling mounts that have the quarter 20 tripod mount screw found on the XGMI, Nomadic, 4Movie, and Hisense, but I'm not a huge fan of this trend, and I'm disappointed that the XGMI and Nomadic decided to leave out their leveling feet and four-point mounting. The Jam Go is even stranger because even though it's rotating and tilting gimbal is great for portability, the power jack is built into the gimbal mount, so it's not removable. You can buy a ceiling mount from Jam Go or try to rig something up with the four threaded holes on the original mount, but neither of those solutions are great since even half a degree of play in the gimbal will misalign your screen significantly. When it comes to throw ratio, which is how far you need to place your projector away from the screen to achieve a specific screen size, the Nomadic is the most unique and can produce a 100 inch diagonal screen from as close as 61 inches away, or using its optical zoom, it can be as far as 73 inches away, which is a throw ratio of 0.7 to 0.83. The XGMI Horizon Ultra also has optical zoom, giving you a little more flexibility in placement and produces a 100 inch screen from a minimum of 103 inches and a maximum of 130 inches giving it a throw ratio of 1.18 to 1.49. The Hisense and Jam Go have the exact same throw ratio, producing a 100 inch diagonal screen from 102 inches away for a throw ratio of 1.17, and the 4Movie X5 has a slightly longer throw ratio, needing 110 inches for a 100 inch screen, which is a throw ratio of 1.26. So too long didn't watch, which projector is right for you? If you mostly watch movies in the dark or with very dim lighting, then the Hisense C1 is absolutely incredible. And from a pure picture quality and viewing experience standpoint, it is definitely the best lifestyle projector that I've ever tested and very close to the best standard throw projector that I've ever tested. Its triple laser light source covers over 99% of the DCI-P3 color space and 95% of BT2020. It supports Dolby Vision and HDR10+, which is normally an either-or situation. It has a smart OS with official Netflix support, making it the only projector that I've ever tested that I would consider using the built-in smart OS. And the sound quality and volume are also fantastic. The C1 is not right for you if you're going to play more than the occasional casual video game, you want to watch 3D content, or you want to use your projector in a room with a significant amount of ambient light both because the C1's peak brightness is best suited for a dark room and because the triple laser light source produces noticeable laser speckle when used with reflective ambient light rejecting screens like my VividStorm Obsidian Long Throw 0.8 gain screen. But it is laser speckle free when using my white 1.1 gain testing screens. If you will be competing with ambient light, then the 4Movie X5's high peak brightness paired with an ambient light rejecting screen is a great option, and it's the projector that I will continue to use in my bedroom, which mostly gets used during the day with at least some lights on for watching sports or YouTube TV. Like the Hisense C1, the 4Movie X5 also has very good audio, which works perfectly for my use case. But the 46.5 milliseconds of input lag means that the X5 is not a gaming-focused projector, and the native operating system is unfortunately unusable since it's made for Chinese region content. But adding a Fire TV Max quickly solves that issue. The Jamgo N1 Ultra is also great for combating ambient light, but as I've mentioned many times, it is not usable with ambient light rejecting screens due to its large amount of laser speckle. However, if you want a projector that is incredibly easy to set up and project onto a wall or a ceiling with excellent brightness, high color space coverage, and decent input lag and sound quality, then the Jamgo N1 Ultra might be the right fit for you. If your focus is gaming, then the Nomadic P1000 should be at the top of your list. The short throw of the Nomadic P1000 makes it a true coffee table projector that can project a 100 inch or larger screen from a forward position, even in a relatively small room. Some big downsides of the P1000 are its relatively low brightness, lack of MEMC motion smoothing, and no HDMI CEC, which means you're going to need your Nomadic remote for power, projector settings, and volume, and then a separate remote for your Fire TV. But the most annoying thing about the P1000 is that it only has one HDMI port, so if you want to use it for gaming and movies, you're going to need to swap your HDMI cable back and forth between your Fire TV Max and your Xbox. Now hopefully this won't be Nomadic's last attempt at a lifestyle projector since they got so much right and I feel like their failures are so easy to fix. Last, let's talk about the XGMI Horizon Ultra since it's got a huge amount of buzz online right now. The aesthetics of the Horizon Ultra are great and the motorized lens cover is a really nice touch. Its hybrid light source is an awesome concept since it gives single laser brightness with increased color gamut from LEDs without introducing laser speckle like a triple laser light source. 
In my testing, the hybrid light source also produced the lowest amount of DLP rainbow effect that I've ever seen from a DLP projector. I also love that the Horizon Ultra has optical zoom, giving people more flexibility in room placement without needing to rely on digital zoom and keystoning that can seriously degrade picture quality. Dolby Vision and tone mapping are also a game changer and Xtreme was a pioneer for bringing this into the lifestyle projector space. But at full brightness, the Horizon Ultra has a native contrast ratio of 241, which is so bad and no amount of Dolby Vision tone mapping can make up for it in dark scenes. I'm not sure if it's specifically the optical zoom, the hybrid light source, or some combination of the two, but 240 to one is not a competitive contrast ratio. And I promise you, you will notice the extremely muddy and gray blacks during normal viewing. A low gain screen or bias lighting might help mitigate the poor black levels, but the peak brightness of the Horizon Ultra was also not particularly high, so it doesn't fit really well in those situations. XGME has already responded to these criticisms and plans to push a firmware update on September 23rd that will increase the brightness on TV, game, and sports modes, as well as fix some menu options. I was able to get a beta version of that firmware for testing, and I can confirm that those modes do have increased brightness when viewing SDR content, at the expense of color accuracy that is shifted towards green, but contrast was still a major issue. And as far as I can tell, there was no change in Dolby Vision brightness. There is, however, one area that I can absolutely recommend the XGME Horizon Ultra over any other projector that I've ever used, and that's for 3D content. Since 3D glasses significantly reduce light levels on their own, it makes the black levels of the Horizon Ultra totally acceptable. I normally think that 3D content is flashy and distracting, but during my testing, I actually watched Gravity in 3D from start to finish because I was so impressed by the 3D performance. And while the JMGO and Nomadic also support 3D, neither of them produced nearly as good of an experience as the XGME did. If you made it to the end of this video, I want to do a quick reminder that there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links down in the description to buy all the projectors in this video from both Amazon and projectorscreen.com. And as always, I appreciate if you use those links, since as an affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. Projectorscreen.com is also currently offering an additional discount on each projector up until Black Friday if you use the links down in the description or you go to this landing page. And they are currently running a sweepstakes right now where signing up for their newsletter enters you for a chance to win a Hisense C1 or if you already bought the C1 for them, you can receive a full refund. All the details for that sweepstakes can be found down in the description. One last thing, as part of my review process, I do color calibrate these projectors using thousands of dollars of professional equipment and software. And I've decided to take the extra time to publish those calibrated values for each projector for free on my Patreon site. They should show up as a public post, so check them out. And if they work on your unit and your space, consider joining these awesome people in supporting my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.